All right. <clears throat> so this talk, as you can see, is learning SQL with SQL Fiddle. Uh, that's the tool I want to introduce to anybody that doesn't already know about it this evening. Uh, my name is John Bass, and I work uh, with SQL now in a payments, uh, uh, credit payments environment. So I'm new to SQL, and so SQL Fiddle has helped me out a lot, um, though I know that it has also helped uh, other developer, helped developers help other developers. So let's get into it. By the site's own explanation, SQL Fiddle is a tool for easy online testing and sharing of database problems and their solutions. To me, it is an excellent tool for those learning SQL to show what doesn't work so that others can show them what does. One of the good things in particular about SQL Fiddle is that it allows you to create a sample database schema and a sample query that goes with it and bundle the whole thing up in a nice, easy, unique URL to share with someone else. So how does it work? It allows someone to create a schema, which for me is usually just one or more database tables, and a query for same, and I have a sample here. This is a sample fiddle. So you can see in this upper left pane is my schema, and in the, oh, that didn't go. Oh, oh, oh. No, ah, foo. One moment. There we go. All right, so as I was saying, this is SQL Fiddle. It's basically a three pane setup. In this uh, upper left pane, you have the sample schema. In the right hand pane, you have the sample query. And then after you run it, you have results down at the bottom. More on that in a moment. All right, we went back, good. All right, so when you're creating uh, Fiddle, uh, you can actually use MySQL, Oracle, PostgreSQL, SQLite, or Microsoft SQL Server commands. And then as I showed earlier, the results of the commands are shown on demand, and the whole package can be shared with a short URL. So the question is, why use it? Number one, the biggest thing is it saves time. Being able to share a schema and a query for that schema can save someone quite a bit of time when they're describing the problem. And I find this especially true for beginners like me, where I don't know all the right terms to get an advanced person like one of you to help me out of the hole that I've dug myself into. It also speeds up someone's ability to help them since they can work directly with your code and send you another link with their solution. Building on that idea, it allows others to build on your work without changing it. Every time a particular schema or query changes, a new URL is generated. So this has a couple of benefits. One, you can share your work and have others build on it without losing what you started. So you can still go back and compare what you submitted to what somebody gave you back. It also means that as you're working with this online tool, your browser's normal functions like back and forward can be used to step through different iterations of a given solution. The other thing that I like about SQL Fiddle is it allows you to work on issues from devices that don't have access to SQL. Um, I've used it from a smartphone. It also works from tablets. Um, another thing is, is you don't have to have that target environment. If somebody wants help with a MySQL query and you want to help them with it, but you don't have a MySQL environment, you can still get in and tinker with it. So another good uh, time saver there is not having to install the target environment. One more point about that is, as the site itself says, it allows you to compare and contrast SQL statements in different database backends. Um, so what you can do is as you're working with a given query, you can switch which database provider is being used so you can quickly tell what does and doesn't change or what should and shouldn't change in your query. This is how I learned that operators, for example, are different in PLSQL versus TSQL. So that's another thing that it helps uh, people learn uh, or can help them more advanced when they go to do uh, any kind of porting work. There are some known limitations to the tool. Uh, when using MySQL, it only supports queries which read from the schema. And the uh, SQL JS option, which is one of the SQL Lite options, can fail in some web browsers. Um, specifically, they list IE9 and Mobile Safari. Um, your, your mileage may vary, so just be aware of that. Uh, what can go wrong? Uh, in the three panels, in the upper two panels, the schema and the code, you have an 8,000 character limit. So 
the idea of SQL Fiddle is that you boil down your schema to just the data that you need to demonstrate the issue. So usually some core data and one or two rows of edge cases. And, but there are times where you will, you'll want something larger. Uh, one trick that I will share with you is that there is a format code button on the right hand pane that can sometimes, if you're just over the limit, get you under the limit. But that is a limit to be aware of is that it's not for modeling very large problems. It's, it's more for boiling things down to their essence. The other thing that I've seen go wrong is you can occasionally get a no host of this type available to create schema, try using a different database version error. Um, I, at first I thought that this was just the site getting too busy, having too many simultaneous clients. Uh, what I've actually found in practice is just closing my web browser and reopening it, a lot of times will make that error go away. One final thing that you can see is, because it is an online web-based tool, you can see, oh, Hang on, you, you can't see, I can see, but you'll see shortly. Grr. One moment. One of the things that you can see is that uh, multiple spaces can get condensed down into one. This is just because of how the, um, I believe this is just because of how the HTML renderers work uh, when submitting jobs for SQL Fiddle. But you can see here that where I should have a large amount of preceding spaces, down in the actual output, I only have one. So that's another known limitation of the tool. I'm not sure, I haven't ha heard of anybody actually having this really impact their uh, use of the tool, but wanted to make you aware of it nonetheless. All right, let's get back. And that's all the usual what can go wrongs that I've found. Where to get help? There is an email address, admin at sqlfiddle.com. There's also a Twitter uh, feed at, at sqlfiddle, or at sqlfiddle, but the, that feed is not very active, but I do know that the author is very active on the various stack websites, so you'll probably see him uh, listed. Uh, so getting, getting help, if you have trouble getting help, um, I'm gonna show how to get a hold of me, and I'll track down where he's active if you need to uh, direct access to him because I have found that there were, I didn't get a chance to put it in this slide deck, but there are a couple of forums that he seems to frequent in the various um, stack websites. Um, is this the only tool like it? No, we're actually blessed with a lot of online tools. Uh, Rex Tester is one that I found. I haven't, um, I haven't used these tools as much as I have SQL Fiddle, so I may give another talk on one of these in the future. Uh, but so far what I've found is Rex Tester is available. It has quite a few languages uh, available um, C Sharp, as well as SQL, many other languages. Um, there's DB Fiddle, um, SQLize, which I believe is uh, primarily for MySQL, and then there's a W3 Schools option, which has the advantage of having one of their sample databases already loaded up in it. So, multiple other choices if SQL Fiddle doesn't work for what you're trying to do. How to contact me? On Twitter, I'm at TechBass, so if you have any uh, issues with SQL Fiddle, let me know, because uh, like I say, I've, I've used it often enough that now that I've, I've seen some of the, the usual gotchas, and I also know where the author uh, hangs out most online. And that's pretty much that. Any questions? When you see the database inside the magic, it that information you send it? Yes, so the schema, is sent, uh, whatever's in the upper left hand pane and upper right hand pane is sent whenever you send this URL at the top here. Um, notice that though when, uh, one thing I wanted to show live was if I change this, let's say we'll just add an order by for fun. Whoops. Okay, that's me going to the wrong tab. So if I add something, I'm gonna change the query, but this would hold true if I change the schema. As soon as I run this query, watch this top bar here, specifically this last one, if you can see it. And notice it changes to, in this case, 11773. So this is a new, unique um, fiddle. So as you edit fiddles, uh, they become new fiddles, and then I can use my browser's back button to go back to the previous one. So I can switch back and forth between different um, iterations of a solution or different things I'm trying. But yes, this whole package uh, goes along with the fiddle, with the URL, 
and then people can add to as they as they like and then send you back solutions. Yes. The only samples that I've seen is right here. This is a sample fiddle, whoops, this one. This is actually the sample fiddle that if you hit this button, this is what comes up. Other than that, no, there are not a lot of samples built into the tool. That being said, if you Google for sqlfiddle.com, uh, especially on any of the stack websites, uh, I have gotten hundreds if not thousands of, of, of um, results, which is good because one of the things I do as a new user of SQL is I actually find the way that it makes people boil a problem down to its essence is really helpful for me. So I actually um, click into a lot of other people's fiddles just to see what they were having trouble with and it helps me learn new functions, new ideas, things like that. But, uh, but no, there's not a lot of, that is one of the weaknesses of the tool. There's not a lot of uh, samples built in. But fortunately there's a huge library online. And you had a question? Do you know how long it takes? Um, there, okay, so funny you should mention that. I have done a lot of research to try to find uh, if there is a hard limit. I cannot find a hard limit, and I have dug up things from at least four to five years ago, so they, they seem to have a good shelf life. It would be good to be careful what you put in the search. Hmm? It would be good to be careful about what data you put Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, indeed it would. Indeed it would, because they do, they do tend to have a long shelf life. But no, I can't find anywhere that there's a published, documented limit and this site is actually in its third incarnation but I've looked over everything the authors provided and I can't find anything that talks about a hard limit but good question any other questions that looks like is it all right there you go